the red rays of the rising sun cast a pall over Vandiyadeva's face and made him tremble. When his sleep cleared, he didn't feel like getting up either, he opened his eyes. A short distance away two menacing preachers were coming. From their twisted braids, trident in one hand and fire Gundam in the other, Vandiyadeva knew that both of them were Kalamukha heroic Shivas. It was felt that all were Kadayan was not here to fight with them. He decided to close his eyes and pretend to sleep until the preachers left. He barely opened his eyes when he felt them standing beside him. When one of them came near and poured, he did not open his eyes. Sivaham. The boy is a good come bakerna, said one. Sivaham. How nice it would be if we had a teenage son like him, said another preacher. Shivoham. You look at the man and say that his face is tired. He is of no use to us. A great danger will soon befall him, said the first Vera Sivar. And pretending to sleep gave Vandiyathevan a sense of suffocation. However, if he wakes up at that time, his pretense will be revealed. They can't even hear what they're saying above. Maybe they can tell him what great danger is about to come to him. But his intention was not fulfilled. Sivaham. His signature. You can come and go. Avira Savar said, and both of them moved away from there. Giving time for them to go some distance, Vandiyadeva got up. He will soon be in great danger. The words were ringing in his ears. The Kalamukkas are the descendants of the old Kabbalikas. They do not offer human sacrifices like the Kabbals. Otherwise they followed the customs of the Kabbalists. Many believed that they had the power to foretell future events by sitting in graveyards and performing gruesome penances. The lay people also thought that they had the power to curse. Therefore, many people were ready to do their due favors so as not to incur the wrath of the Kala Muga Sivas. Many princes used to stop in the temples to give alms to the Kalamukkas regularly. So far only the kings belonging to the Chola dynasty did not show any support to the Kalamukkas. Vandiyathevan, knowing all these details, said, let them leave behind something, what new danger is going to come to us, which has not happened so far. He encouraged himself by thinking that. However, the desire to know about the future never left his mind. Vandiyathevan stood up and saw that the Kalamukkas were walking near an old mandapam. An artificial hill was found near the hall. In it was a cave with a gaping mouth with a lion's face. The Kalamukkas were occupying the caves built by the Digambara giants in the olden days. Vandiyathevan felt a desire to go there and have a little talk with them. He left the horse where it was tied and went towards Sikon. As he approached the hall, he heard the words of the Kalamugaras standing on the other side of the cave. Someone said, that boy wasn't faking sleep. He must have been really asleep. How can you be sure? Said another. I never met a man who, after hearing the words danger approaching, did not want to know about it. The boy seems like a good deal. It would be nice to have him with us, what do you say? What are youths like this for? In a few days the one who is going to ascend the throne of this Chola country is going to die. Who do you mean? Who else? I mean Mad Huron that God. Don't you even know this? How about that? The other two. One is drowned in the sea. Another's time is running short. Vandiyathevan did not want to listen to those old preachers anymore. He did not even intend to talk to them. He soon reached Padayara and told the princess the news and wanted to go to Kanchi. Is it not to Adithakari Kalar that he owes more than all others? It is true that many kinds of dangers surround him. Even Parthipendra fell into the magical trap of the Queen of Pavur. Aditha Kari Kalar, who can jump into any task, never knows when he is in any kind of danger. His primary duty is to go to him and guard him. Idleness on the way is a crime. This moment must go. Vandiyadeva went back without a sound and mounted his horse. He knocked the horse fast. As he passed by the cave of the Kalamugars, he found them staring at him. A face that looked like no other face he had ever seen. But unwilling to stop and look, he went up. 
On the way he saw many villages close to people. It was found that the news of the prince's drowning in the sea had not yet spread there. Because the people were calmly engaged in their work. Until then, good. Before the news of the prince reaches the old palace, he must go and add it. The truth should be revealed to the younger brat. If a different message falls on the ears of Kundave Devi, something bad may happen, right? At least the youngest Brady might be reluctant to believe. That Kajumbalar princess will leave even if she dies. This thought made Van Diathavan very excited. But the horse did not know his haste. The mare, whose legs had been freshly latimed, staggered, unable to run even at its usual speed. Adu, Durga's temple is visible at the fort gate. So many ideas flashed through his mind about how to get into the castle. But nothing seemed possible. Palm signet ring is also not applicable here. Because the castle guards would have been warned beforehand that he would come with the ring. Now when they see the ring they will imprison them without further investigation. They will send him to a small pester. He didn't want to be caught like that before the younger brat could see Kundave Devi. Thoughtfully he slowed his horse down and approached the fort gate when he saw a crowd approaching from another direction. Warriors bearing veils, bearers of awards, mounted on horses, in the midst of so many was a golden chariot in the form of a lotus flower. Aha! Who is sitting in that chariot? Isn't Prince Madhuran Thakdavar? He is the same prince seen in Kadampur Palace and Tanjavur Treasure Dungeon. What is the strategy to enter the fort immediately appeared in Vandiyadeva's mind and made him emotional. I have never seen a person who did not want to know about danger when he hears it. Thus the words of one of the Kalamuks were imprinted in his mind. He himself gave way to that desire, didn't he? Kalamukkar's strategy should be used here. Vandiyadeva sped his weary horse towards the lotus-shaped golden chariot. No one in Madhurand Hakadeva's entourage expected that one would do such a thing. So the horse reached the chariot before anyone could come forward to stop him. At that time Vandiyadeva stood up on his horse. He stared at Madhurand Hagar who was sitting in the chariot. Looked up and said, Oh! Jeopardy! He raised a voice. Immediately he fell off the horse and rolled on the ground. All this happened in a matter of seconds. Some members of Madhurand Hakadeva's retinue saw him heading towards his chariot and hastily unsheathed his knife. Some pointed to job hopping. By then he had fallen off the horse trying to stand up, so their worries were over. Then all laughed at him who fell, Madhurand Hakar also smiled. By then the chariot had stopped. As he signalled with his hand, two soldiers approached Vandiyadevan and tried to lift him up. By then he was sitting up. He jumped up without the help of the soldiers. Prince Madhurand Hagar was staring at him as if he didn't care about his fall. Bring him close like this, said the prince. The two warriors took Vandiyadevan by the hand and placed him beside the chariot. His eyes were still on Madhurand Hagar's face. Dad! Who are you? asked the prince. I'm, it's me. Your Majesty. Don't you know me? Vandiyathevan said. What are you talking about? I. You stay away said Madhurand Hakar. Looking at the other players, the players withdrew. Who do you think I am? Madhurand Hakar asked again. I'm sorry, prince. I said it wrong. You're still, still, he stammered. Have you ever seen me before? Seen, no, never seen. Have you seen me? Have you not? Tell me the truth. I've been telling the truth since yesterday. That's why I can't say for sure. Oko. You've been telling the truth since yesterday? Good fun, laughed Madhurand Hakar. So I can't say for sure. Madhurand Hakar asked again. What can be said for certain in this age? One is like another. One day he is in a veiled palanquin, another day he is in a chariot. What did you say? Madhurand Hakar asked in a slightly startled voice. I said I couldn't say for sure because one is like another. Who do I look like? 
twice I have seen them. Or something similar to them. I doubted whether it was them, that is, I saw them. Just to find out, just before. Standing on a horse and staring like that. Yes, sir. What did you find out? I know you may or may not be the one I saw. It was clear from his face and the tone of his voice that Mad Hurand Hagar was starting to get angry. You pure hooligan. You. Don't be angry, Prince. I'll tell you where I saw you or someone like you. Then you can decide for yourselves. Then tell me, quickly. A large fort, walled on all four sides. Many warriors were gathered there. In the middle of the night, in the smoky light of a large lamp fixed on the wall, they were talking furiously. By the side of the wall was a palanquin. The others questioned the leader of the soldiers. He was angry. Get up quickly. He stood near the palanquin. He pulled back the silk curtain that covered the palanquin. A handsome man came out from inside the palanquin. Seeing him, all the soldiers who had gathered there shouted, Hail! Hail! They chanted, Long live the crown prince! And some shouted, J to the emperor! I remember chanting that, Sir, the face of the person who came out of the palanquin was like theirs. Madhuranthak Deva, who had been listening for so long without interrupting in the middle, sweat began to drip on his forehead. A tinge of fear spread across his face. Truth teller from yesterday. Were you in that crowd of soldiers? He asked. No, sir. Of course not. Then how do you say it looked like it was assembled? The face of Sundara Purusha, who came in the middle of the three people who were coming through such a tunnel, was like their Thirumuga. Whether it is true or not is for you to say. Prince Madhurand Hagar said, Enough stop. Said. There was panic in his voice. Vandaya the van was idle. Are you mean? No, sir. That's not my business. But I'll tell you what happened, I'll tell you what's going to happen. Madhurand Hakar thought for a while and asked, What was it that screamed while standing on the horse? He asked. I screamed danger. Who's at risk? For themselves. What risk? Many perils beset themselves. Equally great positions await. They must be told casually. Have their soldiers snatched away even my knife? If they take me with them into the fort. Come on, come with me. Let's talk casually. Madhurandik Devar beckoned to the leader of the warriors who had accompanied him. He pointed to Vandiyadeva and ordered him to be brought into the fort with them. That order did not excite the warrior leader very much. But he obeyed the order and took Vandiyadeva with him. After a while, the door of the old fort opened. Madhurand Hakadeva and his entourage and Vandiyadeva entered the fort.